Welcome to this completely unnecessary podcast for Tuesday, March 14th, 2017. I'm Pat Contry. Ian, unfortunately, is in a lot of pain. He can't make it this week, so I'll be flying solo. But fear not, Ian will probably be back for the next podcast, so you'll have to endure this one. Don't click off yet, because there is positive news for Ian's condition. He has gone to, I guess, not even a third specialist, a third doctor. This saga began in the uh, the fall for Ian. He started having symptoms in October, uh, and they got they got really bad during the filming of our uh, second set of Let's Plays, the completely unnecessary Let's Plays before that series got derailed. Uh, you know, the last one that just came out was Ninja Gaiden. So he had extreme pain in his abdomen area, and he went to a specialist, two emergency room visits, a second specialist who basically did basically said, "Go see Doctor House. I have no idea what's wrong." So Ian's giving me permission to talk about all this, what's been going on with him, because he wanted to help relate to you guys on YouTube, since a lot of you guys don't realize he's had a Patreon. Excuse me. He's had a GoFundMe. I have the Patreon. We have a Patreon for the podcast. He's had a GoFundMe, uh, and it's at thepunkeffect.com slash Ian, which redirects to it. And uh, he's going to give a full update there. But basically, Ian went to a third doctor. Uh, now he has his insurance all squared away, so that's good. And he was diagnosed with, you can't make this up, A-C-N-E-S. N-E-S. Nerve Entrapment Syndrome. So, specifically though, anterior cutaneous nerve entrapment syndrome is a condition that causes chronic pain of the abdominal wall. It occurs when terminal branches of the lower thoracic intercostal nerves are entrapped in abdominal muscles, causing a severe localized neuropathic pain that is usually experienced at ventral portions of the abdomen. It is frequently overlooked and unrecognized, although the incidence is estimated to be 1 in 2,000 patients. So, we're not talking extremely, extremely rare, like when you grow an extra finger, but you know, it's, you know, it's uncommon, uncommon syndrome. But, um, this is exactly what happened to Ian, reading off Wikipedia. The, the relative unfamiliarity with this condition often leads to significant diagnosis delays, misdiagnosis, which, which Ian has been experiencing for the past four and a half months, often resulting in unnecessary diagnostic interventions and futile procedures. Ian's had his blood taken multiple times. He's had, uh, I think, an endoscopy. He's had st- things stuck in both ends, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with them. So, yeah, that's uh, f- futile and, you know, you know, uncomfortable. Uh, then, yeah, there's more information. Uh, what's funny, though, not that you should give him shit for this, but uh, it predominantly found in young women, but also occurs in children, teenagers, and octogenarians. So that's Ian for you. But uh, but seriously though, there's not really a known cause for this. Like there's a correlation of, of things that could happen in terms of you getting uh, nerve entrapment syndrome in your ab region or NES. Um, but Ian Ian thinks what happened with him was that one of the things that the doctor uh, told him, and the doctor this doctor was great because. He, he was annoyed that the other doctors missed this because, like, like I said, this isn't something that's extremely rare. And this isn't like one in, you know, 100 million people get this. It's one in 2,000. So it's not like, you're going to see that if you're a doctor. You're going to see that at least, you know, a handful of times in, in your, in your, during your practice, if not more than that. Uh, but one of the things that could, I guess, trigger it is rapid weight loss, which Ian did have uh, late last summer. Uh, he lost a, a decent amount of weight within about a month, month and a half, which I didn't realize how quickly he lost that weight at the time, but that might have done something with his ab muscles and you got nerves somehow ending up in there. So the good news is that he's been diagnosed. The bad news is that there's no like quick cure to this. It has to has to basically work itself out of your system. The nerves have to basically, I guess, get un, unentwined, unintertwined with, with your abdominal uh, muscles from the ab wall. The nerves have to come, basically, I guess, recede back. This just sounds fucking awful. And, and Ian explained to me on the phone that the way that the doctor figured out what it was was simply got, like, a business card and ran it over, like, the part of Ian's, like, I guess, abdomen where he thought it hurt just lightly. And he got to a point where it hurt like hell just with, like, just using, a, a like, a, like a, a card on the skin and touching the muscle, which 
which is like, wow, that's like, that is house like shit. But if you knew what it was, you know what to look for. And then, so that, so he ran a couple more tests to the doctor and that sort of, um, that sort of confirmed the diagnosis there. So, you know, there's not a huge, huge amount you can do there. There's like, you can, there's like potentially getting corticosteroid shots to help ease the pain. But, uh, one of the best things you can do, looks like it's like stretch your ab muscles, uh, out. Um, and then hopefully that, that if the nerves sort of get get away from the ab muscles and then go back to the abdominal wall like this it's it's unfortunately not something where you can be like oh you can take this pill and you'd be fine so the good news is that there's a plan of attack uh recent windows defender summary shut up there's the good news is that there's a plan of attack the bad news is that it there's no like time frame for when he'll be better like it's not like magically a month from now he'll be 100 percent. this could take months could take many months, and it'll probably be a gradual process where he'll gradually feel better and better. But at least now he knows that there's light at the end of the tunnel. So, uh, so Ian will be updating his uh, GoFundMe and then closing it down since now he knows what's going on. And uh, so I appreciate everyone who sent in their uh, advice uh, about what Ian, um, what you thought it could be with Ian, whether there was there was. Some theories about, well, if you smoke weed a lot, sometimes it can create air pain. Uh, there, there was other things that were looked into, uh, but it, w it was actually a simpler sort of solution right in front of everyone's eyes that was missed even by the quote-unquote specialist, which annoys me. And that makes it not a, whoa, U.S. healthcare sucks. Y you know, that is nothing to do with that. It's just the doctors, the doctors didn't know what they were doing. That could have been missed by doctors anywhere. Ian was getting care. Just the doctors that he went to, uh, luck in the draw, just were a little sloppy. And that's, and that's not to say most doctors are pretty good. It's just that this is something that's, like I said, it, it, on Wikipedia, it's it's often overlooked because it's not something that uh, you would expect to happen. Oh, nerve endings get trapped in your fucking ab muscles somehow. Like, that's just, that's just a weird th sort of freak thing to happen that, you know, you can say, oh, irritable bowel syndrome, that, that's a, uh, something that's more common sense to diagnose. Or, you know, or maybe an organ or even, well, we thought it was gallbladder at first. That, that seemed like a natural sort of fit, but it wasn't. So, so thanks to everyone who, who stuck on board. And, uh, you know, I know the podcast sucks without Ian. Well, it sucks for me because I have to do it without Ian. And it's honestly not fun to do it without Ian. Uh, I, I can do it somewhat competently. I, I should probably admit, I mean, I can do it. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's enjoyable for me to do. Some topics are fun, some aren't, but I'm, I'm talking here, you know, I, uh, but that's fine. That's fine. You guys got along with, without me for the most part. I uh, haven't lost too many, too many podcast listeners uh, in, in the four and a half months I've been doing this by myself uh, for the most part. But um, so that's great. But I want to just say something else uh, to those that thought that Ian was either faking it or uh, or that it was due to him. I don't know, whatever you want to say, because he was drinking or whatever. Uh, you're not fucking doctors to diagnose it. And and you might have thought your heart was in the right place, but it's really insulting to a way. And, and for, for those and for those handful of people that spread infor misinformation that, you know, Ian wasn't isn't using his GoFundMe fees to help pay for uh, what's been going on. I saw one uh, piece of trash post that, oh, he's just bought weed with, with the money. Uh, first of all, you're outright fucking lying, outright lying, because Ian on his GoFundMe page uh, sh tells us what's been going on, the specialists he's has seen, and where uh, the money has been going towards, and he still has bills to pay. We're talking multiple specialists, uh, two, two emergency room visits. Those are not cheap, besides other tests and everything, and some tests are $2,000, you know, just for a fucking, you know, CAT scan or whatever. Uh, so... It's not like he's he's enjoyed the past five months. He hasn't. He's been in pain every day. And he was reluctant reluctant to do the GoFundMe in the first place. He if he he really should have done you know, he should have done it back in like November, but he was obstinate, he, he was reluctant, he didn't want to seem like he was begging, and people had to talk him into it. People around him that loved him said, Hey, listen, it's not bad to ask people for help, especially if this is a lot of money uh, for all these tests. So for those people that were saying that he, he wasn't using the money for anything or, or, or not, I'll, I'll remember, I'll remember that, um, who you are. I will. Uh, absolutely. And, 
uh, you know, I, I went through just to, this isn't like I went through what he went through, but I had, I had extreme, uh, uh, abdominal pain from something I ate, uh, last week. I tried to make pancakes, uh, for national pancake day. It went horribly wrong. I put too much protein powder, uh, in, in the pancakes, ate the pancakes within a half hour or an hour. My stomach was like, uh Oh, what's going on here? Couldn't throw up the pancakes. My body just had to process it. I was in extreme pain for probably a day and a half while my body tried to digest that awful pancake. It was delicious, by the way. It was like peanut butter and chocolate uh, protein powder pancakes. But too much protein powder didn't dilute it enough. So that was dangerous, I guess. But I was in ext such extreme pain, it was hard to, hard to lay down on my side. It was, um, I, I couldn't eat anything. Uh, you know, really, and it, it was hell. I, I, I couldn't stay like focused and, um, I couldn't, I, I didn't feel rested. I was totally drained. And what I thought was like, if Ian was even experienced, experiencing a third of my pain or even a half of my pain, uh, and he, and doing that for the last four and a half, five months, that's an awful way to live. So good on Ian for, for powering through the best he could with, with everything else going on. Um, enduring all the tests and enduring uh, asshole doctors who didn't know what the hell was going on with them. So, again, uh, Ian's going to try to get back on the podcast uh, for the next week, which will be, we record every two weeks, if you don't know on YouTube. Uh, I, I still point out to people on YouTube that this is an audio podcast first and foremost, with clips uploaded from the podcast. So we'll be recording end of March and following from there, Ian should be back on the podcast. So that's what's going on with Ian. Uh, he had his mini return last time. You saw how painful it was for him there. But, um, yeah, so I'm just happy. We're both happy that he is in a much better spot now because he he can, you know, it's not something awful. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been, we had to, you know, suck out your gallbladder with a vacuum or, God forbid, you have some, some sort of weird cancer or something like that. It's, this is one of the more mild things it could have been. And it's not even something like IBS, where then it's not something you have to live with for a long time. And that will just seem awful. You feel like you got to crap your pants every day that you live. That just seems terrible. So give Ian the support uh, on Twitter. And um, we'll see him soon. Because then uh, we'll have our nice little banter that you guys enjoy listening to.